Welcome back to another example of solving a linear first order differential equation. This example will also be an initial value problem. So for a quick review, the differential equation must be written in this form here, standard form, to be a first order linear differential equation. Next we want to identify the function p of x to find the integrating factor, where the integrating factor is going to be mu of x equals e raised to the power of the integral of p of x integrated with respect to x. So once we find the integrating factor, we'll multiply the differential equation by that function. So we'll have this differential equation here. And when it's in this form, the left side of the differential equation, or this side here, is always going to be equal to the derivative of the product of the integrating factor mu of x and y. So these two are equal and therefore we can set this derivative equal to mu of x times f of x, which again is the integrating factor times f of x. So once we have this equation, we'll integrate both sides and then solve for y. So let's take a look at our example. Again, we have our differential equation and then the initial condition, so this is an initial value problem. We'll first find the general solution and then come back and find the particular solution. So the first step is to make sure that this given differential equation is a linear first order differential equation and written in this form here. Remember dy dx is equal to y prime. Looks like everything is in the correct position. So the next step is to identify the function p of x, which is being multiplied by y. Well here's y, so that means that p of x must just equal one. Once we find p of x, we can find the integrating factor mu of x. Mu of x is equal to e raised to the power of the integral of p of x integrated with respect to x. So we'll have the integral of one dx. The integral of one with respect to x is equal to x, so we'll have e to the x, which is our integrating factor which means now we're going to multiply this entire differential equation by e to the x. So we'll have e to the x times y prime plus e to the x times y must equal e to the x times x or x e to the x. Now that we've multiplied by the integrating factor, the left side of this differential equation is now equal to the derivative of the product of the integrating factor and y, which means the derivative of our integrating factor e to the x times y is equal to this sum here, but that's also equal to x times e to the x. So we'll set this derivative equal to x e to the x. Now that we've done this, we will integrate both sides of the equation and solve for y. So we'll integrate here with respect to x and here with respect to x. So on the left side, this simplifies nicely because we have the integral of the derivative. These two undo each other, so we have e to the x times y equals, now to integrate this, we'll have to apply integration by parts. So for a quick review, here's the integration by parts formula. So we'll let u equal x, which means differential u is going to be equal to just one dx or dx. And dv is going to have to be equal to e to the x dx. Integrating both sides, we would have v equals e to the x. So on the right side, we'll have uv minus the integral of v du. Well, uv is going to be x e to the x minus the integral of v du, which is just e to the x dx. And now this is much easier to integrate. We have e to the x y equals x e to the x minus, this would just be e to the x, and of course plus c. So the last step here is going to be to divide everything by e to the x in order to solve for y. Let's finish this on the next slide. 
So again, we'll divide everything by e to the x. We need to be careful here. This simplifies nicely to y. We're going to divide each term by e to the x. So this first term would just be x. Then we'll have minus one plus c divided by e to the x. Now this is the general solution to the given differential equation, but now that we have an initial condition, we can find the particular solution. Since we know that y of zero equals negative two, we'll sub a zero in for x, and the function value is going to be negative two. So if x is zero, this would be just negative one plus c divided by e to the zero, which is equal to one, and this must equal negative two. Notice if we add one to both sides, we would have c divided by one equals negative one. So c must equal negative one. So the particular solution to this differential equation is y equals x minus one. And then since c is negative one, we could write plus negative one over e to the x, or just minus one divided by e to the x. Now let's take a look at this graphically as well. The given differential equation would produce the red slope field seen here. Since we were told that y of zero equals negative two, our particular solution contains the point zero negative two or this point here. And notice how the graph of our solution or this particular solution would produce this blue graph. Notice how it fits nicely in the slope field and it does contain the point zero, negative two. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.